What's up, everybody? It's your favorite energy drinks, favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the Generation Toy Red Bull, their take on a bull-styled sideswipe, which comes packaged like this, which looks very much to me like a leg mode that could be redecoed into a Predacon. A lot of Predacons going around right now. That tends to be the kind of ebb and flow of third party. They all do the same thing at once, which is probably not the best business plan for them. That being said, we are going to take a look at this guy. I'm anxious to do so, but in order to do so, we need to start with accessories. He does come with two kind of uh, these swap out hand options, uh, pile drivers, I guess you would call them. Uh, black plastic, you got a little kind of cross or X sort of sculpted into it. And I mean, that's about it. And in order to do that, you just sort of untab all this stuff here, tuck the hand in and tab this stuff back together and then plug in your effect. And then you get two of these as well. They are hollow on the inside, which is interesting, but they are sculpted nicely and they are painted silver and you know, every side swipe kind of has to come with them. And the same goes for this style as well. Now, apparently he comes with a gun as well. The gun looks very nice. It can also plug into this side cannon. It looks like it's painted two shades of silver, but Robert did not send it. So um, I don't know. I, I, it looks like he holds it well enough. Your guess is as good as mine. I'm sure it's probably some sort of degree of fine. And then you get this, which is this leg mode and uh, or seemingly a leg mode. I don't know why they would package it like this if it weren't and like stuff tabs together like it, it's it's very, very uh, purposeful, you know, so if it's not intended to combine at some point, I would find that to be very surprising. Um, it is also a little thin. Something to think about if you're thinking about building this as a combiner or if they redeco this as a Predaking. Um, the leg is a little thin. I'm not sure how I feel about that either. Uh, or, you know, and I, I was not blown away by the weight of this at first. I've been thinking a little bit more about it. It may be more in line with kind of chug stuff, but also it may lend itself to a more stable combiner, being as though it's a little thinner. But yeah, this is it. I'll show you what it looks like next to a uh, kind of a Zeta one. You know, so there it is with the Menasaur, Bruticus, you know, so he's going to be a little bit on the smaller side, you know, but probably right in line with your typical sort of transformation um, generation toy Warbitron combiners. And like I said, I don't know if this is intended to be a combiner i'm just saying that if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck right so i'm just playing it on that end if it turns out that it doesn't then it doesn't uh also i would imagine that it would have to sort with the the primal somehow that they did but once again i'm not entirely sure i'm just this sets my spidey sense off is all i'm saying all right, so to get it into the proper alt mode you just bring the head up it kind of locks in once you do so which is another thing it's like I don't know, man. It just sets my, my spider sense off, so all I'm saying. And then you can bring down bring down your hooves. Look at my hooves. And that gets actually a little tricky here. This piece untabs. And I don't wanna cause any damage, but this leg needs to come around and plug back in to those white tabs there and then rotate the hoof around. It would behoove you, you know, to rotate it around. And then bring this down. We're gonna do the same thing and just rotate. There's a, a ball peg here and then a peg here and you just need to rotate both so that they'll line up and you can tab in to the white tabs on the bicep and then rotate the hoof. You know, uh, let's see. All right, and then the back legs are easy. You just bring them down and bring down the hooves. It would behoove you, once again, to bring down the hooves. And then bring the tail up. And you want to get this sorted somehow. But let's see how. There we go. And that's ratcheted, which is nice. And then this will peg in to his back. And now you're kind of ready to go in full, full on bull mode. So I'll get him cleaned up. We'll take a look at him. And I think it looks pretty good. Um, I like, I like 
all of the movements here with the rocket launcher, and I do think it looks appropriate kind of on his back. Like a lot of times weapons and, and alt modes don't really work for me, but I feel like that does. Nice silver paint there and gold paint. This is kind of an accessory, but it's more like a gimmick. There's also a light up function, I think, to it. You could take it apart and insert batteries. I don't have the batteries, so that's that. But I, I saw in the instructions that there is a battery placement in there. The head, you get a swivel left and right. You have silver accents on the horns and on the top of the head, yellow paint on the eyes, which looks good. Uh, the black, I think that's just plastic on the nose. And then the teeth are actually painted inside of his mouth. Neck is also uh, painted silver with the gold pistons. That looks good. Then we have some silver accents throughout. The shoulders move out to about there. The hooves are on ball peg, so you don't really get the full range with them in order to get your... Uh, you're kind of rocker, but I think that will be good enough. Do you know what I mean? It's not perfect, but it'll be good enough. Then you have a swivel here, and you have a swivel. No, no, because this locks in. So you're kind of you're kind of stuck there. And then you have the swivel at the ankle, which is fine. Nice silver accents on the side and on both sides. Same for the back, except you do have this additional kind of ankle joint here, and you have a knee joint there as well as the swivel at the hips. Now these are supposed to peg into the side, but you can unpeg them, but then you're once again, you're kind of stuck with that limited ball peg on the ankle for your rocker. So up to you how you want to handle that. And then at the back here, we have the tail. You can get hinges, swivel, or actually it's just a series of hinges. So you get a wiggle waggle, uh, a secondary wiggle waggle, a tertiary wiggle waggle, and then you get up and down at a number of joints too. So it's a really well articulated tail for being a little little tail, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, that's about it. Cleans up fairly well. I think it's reminiscent of the bull. I, I you know, all this stuff is based off of this guy's artwork, right? That did like these uh, G1 Beast Wars kind of imagination of like a cross between the two where there where there a lot of them are or all of them rather are all animals but they um they look like you know robotic animals as opposed to organic ones like they did in Beast Wars and I much prefer these designs overall but I think it does a pretty good job of capturing it now let's capture them next to Tiger Tracks Let's get them transformed. So spin this tail out and bring these pieces up. You'll see that there's a interlocking kind of tab there. Just be mindful of it for now. We're untab these things on his back and we're gonna split the legs and then we've cleared that tab. Turn the rear hip and leg piece basically into a rectangle-esque kind of shape on both sides. Now we've got some more untabbing to do. Untab these pieces here and they plug in both at the side and the back. Get them out of the way, untab these hip skirts here and here, and untab your rear legs. Inside of the legs, you wanna open up this piece here and separate that a good bit so that you can release this whole back section. And you need to do the same thing for the other side and then I'll stop and get a close up on the next step because it's a little confusing. Okay, the section with the tail, you need to come down by this silver base here, the foot of the robot. So bring this around until it sits down at the bottom and then take your bull leg, swing that towards the outside of the body and flip that over here for now. The tail comes up and I think it just wraps around and the foot or feet flip out. And does that do anything to heal? No, that might be good enough for now. Then bring this section down, tab it in here to the side. There's two tabs. And bring your bull leg up and tab that in to this tab here. So now we need to do that again. So bring this piece down, bring this piece down. This needs to come the opposite direction and then the bull leg swings to the outer side. Now you can bring the foot down, you can flip the toe out, you can bring down this whole assembly here, 
This will plug in to the side. And then you gotta tab in all of your bull leg stuff. So there's a tab, a black tab here, right behind the knee that can get in to the back of the bull. There's a small tab down in here that'll plug in as well. And you can plug in the back of the knee as well. And as you do this, it'll help sort out the like perfect angle for all of the bull parts, which is kind of hard to um, estimate when you're initially doing it. Then for the arms, you just kind of bring them down. You have to untab the tab that you tabbed in before. Straighten out your arm here. This is a lot of this is very kind of intuitive. You know, it just it has to look like an arm, right? Let's bring this down to taste. It has to look like an arm. So just, you know, keep moving things until it starts to look like an arm. Uh, bring this around here to the opposite side. And then you want to maneuver this so that... Uh, what did I do here? These pegs go down in right behind the wrist, and then you angle the bull leg back towards the forearm, and you just sort of have to keep moving it until it works. Rotate the shoulder out, cover that flap down, and then rotate the bicep. I'll show it again. So break that connection that you had before, extend the forearm, rotate the hand out, Maneuver the bull leg until you get it into a position where these two tabs can go in right behind the wrist. Once you've done so, lay the bull leg down flat against the forearm. Spin out your shoulder, bring it down, rotate this panel back up. And now we got more untabbing to do. Un plug the, the back of the backpack and open up your chest here. You can rotate the bull head out and kind of out of the way. Um, you need to rotate these pieces here. They do peg in, so unpeg them first. That's my bad. Then untab this gray bar that the bull head is on. And once you've done that, you can take these shoulder pieces that are right here they're on double hinges and there's a they plug into the gray bar and into the kind of abdomen area here so you got to get them up and out of the way and rotate them to the outside then we need to swing side swipes head through this cavity here back around the back side come up and over the bull head we need to have the horns collapsed we need to have this connection disconnected and the bull head needs to come through this open space and sit with the horns in these little pockets here. Once you have that, you can take the back of the bull head and line it back up with this silver kind of uh, sheath, I guess, holder, whatever you want to call it. And we can start closing up. So you can close up your chest here. If you've done it right, which I probably have not. Oh. If you've done it right, then you should have it lined up. These uh, slots and tabs here on the shoulders, there's one. There's two. We have to bring in our gray bar and plug that in. Bring side swipes head up and plug that in. Bring the backpack up, plug that in. And then you have your kind of rocket launcher that you can do whatever with. I'll get it cleaned up. We'll take a look at it. So let's talk about the figure. We'll keep the cannon out of here for now. The head can go up down swivel no confused dog 
so it's a hinge swivel. It is a little bit of a displaced neck if you go too far, but I think overall it works really well and gets you a great range. Horns are painted silver, face is painted silver, eyes are painted metallic blue, so they're pretty striking. Neck is painted silver. I'm good with that. I'm good with the proportions too. It looks great. So no issues there either. The chest has the silver accents. We do have a waist swivel and one of the best ab crunches I've ever seen. And it even tucks in like this little piece here. Like it seems very natural, very mechanical. I, I love it. We have the shoulders. You have all sorts of engineering going on here. So you have a swivel. You have a hinge, you have a secondary hinge using both. You can get it up. It does start to kind of push things out of the way. Easy enough to fix. You have a bicep swivel. You have, I want to see if, if I can rotate that joint. Yeah. Then you have a backward, uh, butterfly. Uh, and I don't know. Can you rotate it? Can you rotate it the other way? And a forward butterfly if you just keep messing with it. So beautifully done. You have a bicep swivel, silver paint here on the shoulder. You have a single hinged elbow, a double hinge would have, well, I guess it is technically double hinged, but the range is only 90 degrees. So that's a bummer because this guy's pretty articulated, but that's gonna feel fairly limiting. Gold paint here, silver paint there. Wrist swivel and hinge in out. The thumb is on its own hinge. The fingers are on a base pen knuckle, so you will have typewriter hands. Um, and there's a tolerance issue a little, little bit, you can see. So that's not 100% right, but not the biggest deal in the world. All right, same for the other side. We have the hip skirts. They'll get out of the way for your universals, which gets you uh, way more up than you could possibly imagine. Not a whole lot back, but I'm okay with that. And then we have out to the side, a little limited, but I think, uh, I don't know if you'll need anything beyond this. You know, we only say the full Van Damme and the full Monty to express the range of motion. You don't really need all that range. You have a thigh swivel built around the universal. That's the perfect way to do that. You have a double hinge knee that gets you almost the full run and it's ratcheted and the knee joint is painted silver. Beautiful work, silver accents on the thighs. Um, love the sculpted detail down here at the bottom. Love how the legs work in general. I feel like Generation Toy, that whole conglomerate, usually nails the leg transformation. Uh, ankle tilt down, slight bit up, toe tilt down, no bit up, and an insane rocker. And there he is from the back. I mean, it's, it's a pretty well done unit, like all in all. A couple things I would change couple things I would have liked to have seen, but I mean, for the robot, the engineering, the articulation of it, really well done. Size comparison wise, there he is with another one of their kind of similarly styled, uh, you know, masterpiece scale, but kind of chug decoed and built figure. And then there he is with a masterpiece. So, I mean, just about him on par with what they've always done. Should fit in nicely pretty much anywhere, depending on how you have the figures laid out. Final thoughts wise, let's talk about the negatives. I'll tell you the one thing I think they really missed here was that double jointed elbow. We'll talk a little bit more about why when we get to the positives, but that's the thing I feel like they really missed the boat on. The instructions don't do a very good job of telling you about all of the things that have to move on this guy. Lots of little tabs, lots of little flaps, lots of little flip flaps, spin arounds, tuck them in, etc. It's a very involved and possibly even overly engineered figure perhaps too much engineering went into this in regards to transformation and could have been simplified a bit but at the very least the instructions could have been more forthcoming about how they educated you to do so the, my last criticism is more of a personal certainly subjective point of view but i gotta mention it it feels like a chug figure and i mean that not to say that it feels bad but that it feels like a chug figure it feels like a nicely really nicely done one like uh mmc would do with their reformatted stuff Stuff, but it's sculpted and scaled like a masterpiece. So there is some sort of odd feeling when handling this that it doesn't quite know exactly what it wants to be. It's very much a personal thing is how I feel about it. And it's not necessarily a knock. It's just something that I I would be lying if I said I didn't feel I, I needed to mention. Positives wise, there are plenty. This thing is sculpted beautifully. There is just enough paint accents 
for something that's not fully painted to break up the colors perfectly. It comes with all of the appropriate accessories. I didn't get to handle all of them, but it does come with them. It is engineered beautifully in regard to its articulation engineering. Just outstanding. That's why that double hinged elbow feels like such an oversight because of just how well this thing is engineered in regard to its articulation. Really, really, really tremendous. It was nice to handle such a figure that is articulated so beautifully because I've been looking at figures recently where I feel like, ah, oh, we probably could have done more here with the articulation. And in fact, it makes me think about other things I'm missing. Like I can tell you when the vaccine is found for all this madness out there, the very first thing I'm gonna do. I waited so long. Oh, that's the stuff. Finally. Ah, right in there. Yes, yes. Oh my goodness. For real, I miss touching my face very much. Anyway, it's sculpted beautifully. The bull mode is sculpted beautifully. The robot mode is sculpted beautifully. There's hardware in the knees. The materials feel fine enough. It has a presence. It's a strong recommend for me if you're interested in the design because it's a really well done thing. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.